you fly fish for coho salmon in the Puget Sound area, uh, chances are good you've used the Klaus and Minnow, either in chartreuse and white or in pink and white. I use these a lot myself, and when I talk to other anglers on the beach, it's usually what they're using too. And the reason is that they are a proven killer, no doubt about it. Unfortunately, they're not the easiest flies to cast because of those weighted eyes. If you try to get more casting distance by increasing the line speed, that heavy fly tends to snap back when it gets to the end of the leader and it collapses back onto your fly line in the heap. In a strong wind, this is even more of a problem. Now, one solution is to make a Belgian style cast, but in the situations where you've got other anglers nearby, you often just don't have room for that. So there are situations where I really don't like to fish clouses, and I have been looking for an alternative that isn't as heavy, but still has got that nice bait fish profile. So what I've come up with is this. Uh, this is another saltwater classic, the Lefty's Deceiver, developed in the 1950s by Lefty Cray. It's been used for just a ton of different species, and not only in saltwater. But I can't find many instances of it being specifically applied to coho salmon. Jay Nicholas has a YouTube video from like 10 years ago, but that was for a very big fly and he used mostly non-traditional materials. Now one great property of the deceiver is that it can swim high up in the water column if you want it to, instead of just sinking quickly like the clouser. Now remember that salmon can only see things in front of and above them. If they're near to shore and they're targeting schools of baitfish, they might not ever see that deep clouser. So I've tied these in the three color combinations you see here. A pink tail with a chartreuse wing, chartreuse tail with a pink wing, and a more natural looking white and olive one. And I can say that both the pink and the chartreuse combinations definitely catch fish <laughs> and as a result of that I really haven't experimented very much with the white one uh, to date. In this video I'll be tying the pink tailed version but before I start uh, this is actually the first video I've made using this new vise. Uh, I actually wore out the jaws of my old griffin vise, my fault entirely, so uh, it'll no longer hold small hooks and in fact it, it pings them across the room. So I decided to upgrade to this. Uh, this is the Wolf Atlas. And it comes with both a C-clamp and this really brilliant heavy base. And the whole thing is beautifully machined, very nicely made in the US. Um, the two-step clamping mechanism it's got takes a little bit of getting used to at first, but it does work pretty well. And I especially like the fact that it looks like a movie prop from, uh, from Forbidden Planet. Anyway, on to tying the coho deceiver. Now the hook I'm using is the RX SA220, which they describe as a streamer hook, but actually it's much shorter than a traditional streamer hook, and it's made from a heavier wire. It really works well for this pattern, and I'm using a size 6. So here I've got one that I've already debarbed. Now you could use a standard saltwater hook like these um, Chiemco 811s, but if you do that you should go with size 4. For some reason all the RX hooks run really quite big across the gape, so you'll see if I hold up one of the size 4 Chiemcos, it's very close to the size 6 RX. Thread choice is up to you, but I'm going to use UTC 140D in fluorescent pink just to match the tail colour. I'll start by laying down a quick base of thread from a couple of mils behind the eye to about level with the barb. Now of course the hallmark of the lefty's deceiver is the feather tail and you could use strung saddle hackle like this. Problem is I'm only tying a three inch fly here so I'd be restricted to using the tips of the hackle. And out at the tip the stem of these feathers is really quite slender. This would give a lot of movement but it's potentially just not stiff enough to prevent fouling of the hook. So instead of the strung hackle, I'm using a Chinese streamer neck from Wopsy. These are widely available and they cost around $15 to $18. The necks contain a very large number of useful feathers and they're a great buy. I'm going to be using feathers from down around here. They're quite webby 
and just perfect for this pattern. Now I've seen a lot of videos where folks very carefully tie their feathers in in pairs but I've read that Lefty Cray himself would just grab a bunch of feathers and lash them onto the hook any old how just as they came. I'm going somewhere between those extremes so I've picked and prepared six feathers and I've laid them on my desk in two bunches of three. I'm going to pick those up so that the convex side of each bunch is together and the tips splay outward like that. I want these to extend about two shank lengths. So I'm going to tie in all six feathers at once. I'll trim away the stems. So you'll see again I've got those tips splaying outwards like that. Now I'll advance my thread back to the bend and I want to tie in some flash. So first I've got some holographic silver. I've lost the label on this but I'm pretty sure it's just flashaboo. I only want a single strand and I'm going to tie this in uh, to represent a lateral line. So I'll attach it on my side first, just as close to the center line as I can. And I'll bend it back and do the same on the other side. Just cut it to the length of the tail. Now I'm also going to put in some pearl flashaboo. I've got three or four strands and again I want to tie these more or less along the center line. Do just what I did with the silver, bend it back, tie in along the other side. Okay, that looks okay. And I take my thread back towards the eye. And I'm going to cover the body with flat diamond braid. Um, this is silver but I've also used pearl and both will work just fine. The trick with this is um, just to get a couple of turns of thread around it and then pull in the loose ends, secure it along the hook shank, thread back up to the eye and then you want to just wrap that tightly and overlap it slightly as you go. You could coat with super glue, um, but I don't find that's really necessary. Okay, just tie that off. And then trim away the excess. Now the traditional lefties deceiver has a belly of bucktail, usually white, but I'm going to be using white supreme hair, which is exactly the same thing as super hair depending on the supplier. So this fiber's got a crinkle to it, but it doesn't taper. It's stiffer than bucktail, which helps to support the feather tail, and it also has this uh, translucent shimmering quality, which looks quite a bit like fish scales. So I've cut a small hank of it here, about half the width of a pencil, and I'm going to tie it in so it extends about halfway into the tail. So I'll attach that with a few thread wraps, like so. Then I'm going to use my fingernail 
just to distribute that around the hook shank a little bit. Take a few more wraps to secure it. Now I'll cut off the ends at an angle. That's got it. Now I'm just going to take a few more wraps into those cut ends. Beginning the process of making a head. And I'm just going to use my bodkin to push some of those fibers back out of the way. So for the wing, I'm going more traditional with some bucktail in chartreuse. Now if I tied this with a chartreuse tail, I'd be using fluorescent pink bucktail for the wing. I'm going to tie my wing in about the same length as the belly. Quite sparse. I attach that using a pinch wrap. I'm just going to make sure it's centered and that looks fine. I trim the butts off at an angle. And again, I'm going to cover those cut ends with a little bit more thread. And at this stage I'm going to add just a little dab of super glue. It never hurts. And the wing has a topping of peacock curl. I want three or four of these. And I'm going to try and get those positioned so that the natural curvature in all of them lines up and is downwards. Just have to mess with them a bit. There we go. And I'm going to tie those in right on top of the bucktail. That's good. Cut away the excess. And do a little bit of tidying up. The next thing I'm going to add is a throat of red crystal flash. So I've got three strands here. And I'm going to fold and cut those in half. I'll fold those six strands over and halve them once again. And then repeat that one more time. I'll just even up those cut ends. These are going to represent gills and, and give an aiming point. If you don't have red crystal flash you could probably use red hackle fibers. And I'm aiming to have these reach about as far back as the hook point. Now 
and I'll just get rid of that. And that one. Now I'll just try and form a nice head covering up all those materials. And I'm going to spin my bod bobbin anti-clockwise to flatten my thread. And then make a whip finish. Now I can detach my thread. And the last thing I need to do is to add some eyes. So I'm going to add some small tape eyes in pearl and black. Uh, not the domed eyes, they would add too much bulk. The easiest way is just to transfer these onto the head of the fly with the tip of a bodkin. With one side done. and the other one. So I'm going to fasten these into place by using a thin UV cure resin. I'm just going to let the resin flow around and under the edges of the eyes. It's going to coat the whole head. Just a slight adjustment needed on this side. And we'll give that a cure. So finally I'm going to apply a thin coat of Sally Hansen's Hard as Nails. Um, and this prevents the salt water from reacting with the UV resin and causing it to go hazy. Okay, so that's my version of the Lefty's Deceiver, tied for Coho Salmon. I'm going to put the materials list in the video description. Like I say, it's a nice alternative to the Clouser Minnow and it catches fish. So take a look. Thank you. 
come on. Oh yeah. Ah, it's off. Like a little fish.